This morning we did a little gift exchange. I gave Badge his coffee. Uh, I gave him the um, French press and some of those uh, really good um, keepers. And <laughs> looks like I got in exchange a uh, multimeter, which is awesome. Uh, this is my new uh, French press, by the way. It used to be my sister's. Snagged that out of the garage I cleaned up. Also, exchanged the lens that I got uh, for a GoPro and a Karma grip. And I gotta say, I gotta say, that was a very smart choice because I'll be using it all the time. Let's go check in with Badge and see what he thinks about this air conditioning situation here. Doctor? What's the prognosis? We're gonna get this air cleaner up because we gotta find out about Is that uh, vacuum. Because I think this is vacuum issue. All right, and um, the switch for the switches, right? Yep, and also for everyone who hasn't been paying along, uh, paying attention along, there is a blend door up there. There's a blend. It's called a blend door actuator and a blend door thing. We gotta fix that and do some magic to it. Is a vacuum, right? And that is what controls. This one hasn't got electric on it, so it controls all the doors with vacuum. And that's what these solenoids are. You see these vacuum solenoids here? Uh huh. Okay. Th those uh, those yeah. me those metal things? Yeah. Right here. See? Oh yeah. These are all your vacuum lines, right? This controls all your the heat and everything. Yeah. So what we do is we start it up. Right? Yep. Give it a minute to build the vacuum up. And then you turn it. It has to be on. That's AC, but vent, huh? Yeah, AC. Oh, and AC. You, yeah. And see, the, so, see that right there? That solenoid's moving. Okay, so we go to vent. I don't see it moving. Okay. Let me just get this out of the way. Okay, let's go watch that one there. See the how the thing works? Oh, yeah. See how they work? Oh, yeah, that's a noise that I've heard before. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the vacuum control for, and that's working, right? You put it in off and it shuts. Yep. You put it on AC and it opens it. Right. You put it over on floor and it shuts. Yep. So it's working. All right, so the vacuum is not the issue? Is that no. what I'm gathering? I'm thinking the problem, we have to charge the AC because um, it's empty, right? Right. So we got to put the AC in it, and you can't tell the AC's working unless it, it's charged. So we're going to go down to our buddies at O'Reilly's and get some stuff to charge it. All right. This is what you call uh, vacuum switches, right? Yep. It's not electric. Like that one door, remember I said it, that control? That control you got, I said, I don't think this is the right one. Yes. It wasn't because this is vacuum, not electric. All right. Okay, get down in there. All right. Now reach right back in there, and you'll feel a rod right back in there, way back in there. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah see that? that solenoid. Okay. Yeah. Now, you feel it move? No. Oh, yeah, now it's moving. Exactly. Yeah. That's your blend door that you say is not working. Yeah. It's working. The problem with the bus, with Danny, is that everything's tied together. The dash air, the back air is all tied together, so everything has to work. Yeah. And that's what I said, that because when you told me about the vent, I'm thinking, eh, I don't know about that. Okay. But the reason the vent didn't work is because the heater switch wasn't working. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So now what we have to do is charge the air conditioning, and we know that all the vacuum's working, so now what we have to do is go get some stuff to charge the air conditioning, and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, just so you guys know, I'm not one to argue with an expert. I don't take my teeth 
to... Did we find that <laughs> Right here, this guy. We, find it, we never <laughs> found one yet. You don't take your car to a dentist. And so that's why... We're, I, I I know he's he's right. He's the he's the magician. He's the pro. So we're gonna we're gonna do that at some point today. Okay, you see on Danny, it's got these two valves. Now what this does is turns off the water, the hot water going to the back heater. Now these are a real good thing because if you turn these off, you have no water, hot water in the summer. So your air conditioning will work 100% because it doesn't have more hot water. That's why he's worried about the blend door. I don't think the blend door is an issue because you turn the water off, there shouldn't be no heat there anyway. But that's what we're going to check that out. Oh my God, look at that. The Canadians won the hockey game against the girls. Oh, geez, too bad. <laughs> A proud Canadian. <laughs> By the way, you guys been watching any of the Olympics? Um, the first They're games. They're cleaning up the Americans. The first Americans games, the first games I watched were the um, curling. wasn't so exciting, but then you know, I don't know the next day they had other things and other things, and then I kind of missed the it. Snowboarders. So. <laughs> the snowboarding was epic. Uh, shout out to uh, you know Sean White and all those guys for doing a great job. Kimmy, Chloe, Kim. Chloe Kim too. Man, her and her dad are goals. Like they have the best relationship. Like they they're a good inspiration for people. They're a good example. Even what's your name? Who's the uh, downhiller? Sure. I forget. She, yeah, she's doing awesome. She's gonna <laughs> get, she won gold last night. She's going to win another one. I, I think we're going to sit around and watch some Olympics uh, uh, tonight, Michaela. along with some dinner. Yeah, Michaela. Hey, she's doing good. All right, we're going to head into town with the doggies. We're going to get some parts. This is a very expensive multimeter, but it has a temperature setting on this. I'm not saying this is right, I'm just saying this is how we do it. Is we put the temperature in, and I got a teeth. <laughs> That's what $8,000 of teeth look like. <laughs> but anyway, we put this in the AC ducts, you put all the windows shut, all the windows are shut, and you put it on max air. And what you're trying to do is to get it to 40 degrees. Now, if you're filling it up, because I can tell you all the pressures and all that ain't gonna mean nothing to you but if you just fill it to 40 degrees it'll work just fine and so now all we have to do is fill it so that's what we're gonna do now all and right bought a set of gauges because i left my gauges in canada well, so we got my gift to you actually well no you can't take yeah. gifts but it's we got a <laughs> set of gauges anyway and we're gonna charge it so i can't do it without both gauges. I gotta have both gauges. I can't do it with the one gauge. I have to do two gauges. The the gauges being the high and low pressure. The high and low. Because you gotta see when you put it in the low, you gotta see what it does in high. You never put it in the high. That's when you start breaking pumps and stuff. We got this whole kit here. Yeah. Gauge and hose set. Yeah. It was a little hard to read because the thing was over it. Okay, now you see these hoses. You see this little kit? These are the little green things. You got to keep them handy because these are, if you drop these out or lose them, it won't work. And if you look in the hoses, there's some there. If you don't have them in there, it'll leak and it'll give you a false reading. So what we got here is a set of high and low gauges. Blue's low, red's high. And they got knobs. The knobs are to take the fluid from here and put it out to the, the lines out wherever on the high side. These turn it off. You always keep these turned off. Never turn the high on when you're putting Freon in. You always put Freon on the low side. This set of gauges, some will have a Schrader valve in there. So that you can take the hose off and it won't leak, but this don't have it. So you gotta remember that. I know, you have to think. But you have to remember that. You have to have an O-ring on here, and this valve just screws on here, like so. All this stuff is hand tight. You don't have to tighten it up. It's made that way. This red one goes on the same way. You can't put a blue on a red and a red and a blue. That's how they make it idiot proof. See, they're different sizes. Small one is low, big one is high. But the red goes down here, right by the battery. And that's the high. Yeah. This is the low. The low goes on the small one, right? So 
you turn the you turn the end out, the valve off or out, right? Because when it's out, it's off. You put it on, and then we'll turn it in. That's probably what it would be. Get this one, turn this one. It'll probably work a lot better. Okay, so when you get it hooked up, you double check and make sure they don't come off, and then you turn the knob in. And the knob opens, manually opens up the valve. There's not a check valve, it's a manual valve, it's like this one. They both got the same, right? And you both do them in the same direction? And then you look at that, and you notice, you can tell you got it evacuated, because you'll see the gauge will move a little bit. That's telling you that it's, for good. it's had a little bit of Freon left in it. As long as you got that and not in the negative, you're all right. The high side you won't see because it's... It's, um, oh, I should tell you that. That gauge is hooked to the hose, not to the knob. This will always read because it's hooked to the hose. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And this one is the same way. Now, this is what they call a sight glass. And that, when we put the Freon in, you'll see it go up the hose and in here and then out the low side. And I should mention, this is what we are using for the uh, refrigerant. For no particular reason, I guess in California, there is a returnable deposit, $10 a bottle. So there is $50 in returnable cans right here. Also a badge recommended to keep these in the shade out of the direct sunlight. You put that there, and we're gonna open the valve up and that'll get free on to here. So then you open it up just a little bit. Now watch this here. See, it? See that little bit? That's telling you the Freon's going in. Okay? So now, think, if you notice when you have your air conditioning and it's empty, that nothing works. So, because you need about 20 pounds to kick the, the clutch in. So we'll start it up now and we'll see what happens and then we'll slowly, slowly put it in. Basically what's happening, the Freon's coming out of there as a liquid, going through the gauge, and by the time it comes out of this hose, because of the restriction, it'll be a vapor over there. So good news, after just one can, the clutch is, is turning on and off. Let's see over here, we are a little low on oil. This thing keeps turning on and off as well. This thing is turning on and off. You can see some of the liquid going through the system there. And this is can number two. This is now working. You know, we're through three bottles. I think we're done with the fourth. Okay, now we started out at 87 degrees and we already got it down to 10. Yep, so we're down to 77 degrees. We need it to be 40. All right, here's the update. We're at 73 degrees and we are on the very last can. So it looks like we're gonna have to get some more cans of refrigerant. All right, we're back. We got some of this stuff. This is uh, oil. Apparently you need oil in your AC system. We are seven cans deep. I have my foot on the throttle. We have brought it down to now 52 degrees, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. This is getting pretty ice cold inside here. I'm so excited, you have no idea. I have freaking air conditioning again, finally. Yes! Badge is a genius. He is my mechanic magician. And I am so grateful. Honestly, Badge, thank you so, so much. You've saved me lots and lots of money. See how it's got it air in it? Yep. Now watch when I rev it up, it'll go away. All right. But it'll get worse, so it needs another go. All right. Yeah, it's like that far. Yeah. It's like a, it's like an eighth of an inch or so. So. Yeah, so we'll put another jug in it and bring that up, because now we don't want to. Yeah, the experts say you should suck it all out, put it in by weight. Tell me how much it holds. <laughs> Good point. We have an aftermarket air conditioner on a Ford vehicle. It's a considered a strip chassis, just like a Class C RV. Uh, a U-Haul van, ambulance, things like that. So who really knows? I don't know. What do you say, dude? <laughs> I think you better put your buckskin bra on, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Badge, you're the man! You're so awesome. Uh, I think we should take it for a spin, huh? Yeah. All right.
Now, I've told you guys how much I love AC. I don't know in words or numbers how I can describe how much I like AC. That's right. Badger. Your insulated underwear on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bring your parka if you want to ride, take a ride in Dan the Adventure Bus from now on. <laughs> Bring your Canadian goose down parka. Um, it is, I forget what the last reading was, 44, 45? That is good enough. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go get some parts. I'm probably just going to call it a day for now. We're going to watch some Olympics, eat some food. Elle was nice enough to cook up some stuff with Badge. So we're going to have a nice old dinner. Probably just going to end it right here and pick back up tomorrow. Well, we got a couple more fixes on the bus. Thanks for watching.